two examples of how to apply the stiffness method uh, in analyzing uh, structures. Okay? Today we are going to continue with it and we are still going to look at only uh, loads uh, on the structure. Uh, from the next lecture onwards we will start looking at other effects other than loads and what effect they can have on the uh, structure. Okay? So, uh, or in other words how to uh, consider those uh, in the application of the stiffness method. Okay? So, let us take a more as I said I am going steadily into more and more complicated problems, but ultimately as I told you that I am never going to exceed more than 2 degrees of freedom in all these examples for the simple reason is that hand computation is not possible. However, uh, the, the method that I develop is valid for all degrees of freedom. You can have 150 degrees of freedom if you so desire. The only thing is at the end of it you are going to get a 150 by 150 matrix which you will only be able to solve using a computer okay? or a maybe a programmable calculator in these today's world. Okay. So, let us look at uh, the example that I am uh, going to present in today's lecture. And understand this that when I say I am steadily getting into more complicated problems, I am essentially really referring to uh, complexity in pro these kind of problems can only come in the complexity of the kinematic relationships rather than any other complication. Because everything else once you apply the matrix uh, stiffness method. Uh, everything else is just one step after another. The advantage of this method is that you can look each member, member by member, look at first what are the fixed end moments. Set, uh, no, first what you decide is what is the member type that you consider. Next you compute the fixed end moments. Third you compute the relationship with the member end loads and member end deformations. Third you compute the kinematic relationship between the member and deformations and the structure degrees of freedom and these are the steps by which you follow. So, there cannot be any further complications in this. The only complication that I can bring in is into how to draw kinematic relations and in fact the entire uh, steps over here the only major thing that really uh, has a role to play is the kinematic relationship. Okay? Uh, so, in this particular problem I have A, B, C and D okay? and uh, uh, this one the loads are the following. I have a 50 kilo Newton load here. R1 here, R2 here, this is EI, this is also EI and this is also EI. Okay? This length is 15 meters from here to here. This by the way is the same point to be is 20 meters and from B to C is 15 meters okay? uh, and furthermore there is a UDL on this and this is intensity 4 kilonewton per meter 
and this is the two degree of freedom structure and these are the degrees of freedom okay satisfy yourself that this is the two degrees of freedom structure i am not going to go into finding out the kinematic the kinematic indeterminacy or the number of degrees of freedom by now i expect that you should be able to do that and i have chosen these two as my degrees of freedom okay in this particular problem furthermore i am given here that ei is equal to 2 into 10 to the power of 6 kilonewton meter squared okay and the question here is find a the horizontal displacement of point B which that is why I have taken that as R1 and the rotation of point B which is why I have taken that as my R2 okay uh, and part B is member and moments and support reactions. So, these are the things that you have been asked to find out in this particular problem and this obviously we are going to solve uh, using the matrix uh, approach for the matrix approach uh, of the displacement method which is essentially the stiffness method. Okay. So, now let us proceed on to the solution. What is the first step? Uh, the first step we have already completed and did, you know figured out how many degrees of freedom and identified the degrees of freedom. The next step is for each member to find out the fixed end moments. So, the first member AB. What is the type of member AB? Type of member AB is we are going to take it this form and this is A and this is B. So, therefore, uh, in this member what are the fixed end moments? The, you know this is a modified member. So, the only fixed end moment is going to be B A and that is going to be equal to 0. Okay. Furthermore, what is uh, K A B member? It is equal to 3 e i by uh, L, L is 20 in this particular case, which if I substitute uh, the uh, this thing in becomes 3 into 10 to the power of 5 and the uh, V A B is equal to theta B A. Okay? So, these are my identification for each member. So, then I will go into computing for B C. What kind of a member of for B C do I consider? For B C I consider the member to be in this fashion where this is equal to this this is B, this is C and the loading that we have on the member is this for kilonewton meter. Okay. Uh, v B C is equal to theta B C only. Okay. Uh, K B C is obviously going to be 3 E i upon L, L is 15 in this particular case. So, this is equal to 4 into 10 to the power of 5 uh, kilo Newton meter by radian. Okay. And fixed in moment at V C is going to be equal to 4 E i into 15 squared by 8 
plus half 4 into 15 squared by 8. So this is equal to This is 225 by 2, 112.5. So 112.5 minus uh, 225. 225 is 112.5. This is 12, 12. So this is going to be equal to uh, 0.8. So this is going to be equal to hundred and twelve point five kilonewton meter. So I've done this for B C now and now finally C D C D if we look at it uh, for C D uh, the form of sorry B D for B D the form is B D okay and therefore uh, V of B D is going to be equal to theta V D theta D B K B D is going to be equal to mm, 2 E I upon L so this is going to be equal to uh, 2 E I upon 25 into 2 1 1 2 which is equal to 16 into 10 to the power of 4 2 1 1 2 that is KBD and uh, fixed 10 moments of BD which is essentially S 0 of B D is equal to 0, 0. There is no load. So, 0, 0 kilonewton per meter. So, now I have essentially for each member, I have written down degrees of freedom for each member. So these are the member end deformations. Depending on, uh, that depends on what uh, is the element that you are using. Then you have to write down the stiffness uh, matrix. That also depends on what are the degrees of freedom. I've written that down. And I finally evaluated the fixed end moment for each member. Okay. So this in a sense uh, is everything done for the each member. Now the next step is to find out the kinematic relationships. Okay. Which relates the member end deformations to the, uh, in other words, member degrees of freedom to the structure degrees of freedom. Okay? So, how do we find that out? We first put R1 equal to 1. So, this is my, I am going to draw it slightly enlarged. Right? So, this is this is this way and this is this way. Okay. And now I am going to be giving uh, R1 equal to 1, which essentially means that this point has to move horizontally by 1. But if it moves horizontally by 1, if you note it, that this particular member is fixed here. So, the only way this can move is in this plane. Okay. Now, these can move this way. So, what we essentially have is that this point comes, if this is 1, this is 4 by 3 and this is 5 by 3. This point comes here this point moves here by 1 
this point moves here by one. So what we have a sense is that these come here. Note that you know I'm always drawing this exaggerated to essentially establish the point. By the way, these have to remain in this way because this is the the there can be no rotation at this point. So once we have this I can draw it in this way, doesn't matter. Then here, this one goes this way, and here, this one goes this way. So now let's join the chords. This is the chord for AB. So this is my A prime, this is my B prime. I'm sorry, this goes actually here. This is my C prime and my D does not move anywhere. Okay? So this is the chord of AB. This is the chord for BC. And this is the chord for BD. So what are the rotations? See, this is this way. This is this way. This is this way. So the rotations here are going to be this. This is going to be equal to 4 divided 4 by 3 uh, into um, oh by the way uh, this, this is not going to go this here. This one is actually aligned this way. So therefore this cannot go this way. This has to move along this direction. So if we see this direction okay, this was given This is given 4 here and 3 here. Okay. So if this moves, uh, this moves by 1, this moves by 3 by 4. So this actually is, is this way. So the total movement is going to be equal to 4 by 3 plus 3 by 4, that is the total distance moved, divided by 15. Okay? So, if you uh, look at that, this 4 by 3, this is going to be equal to 12. So, 12, 16 plus 9, so it's 25 uh, upon 12, and 25 upon 12 is going to be equal to uh, you will have 5 upon 3. Okay? So this in a sense becomes 5 upon 36. So this is this rotation. How much is this rotation by? This is going to be equal to 5 by 3 divided by 25 which is equal to 1 by 15. This is going to be equal to 4 by 3 divided by 20 which is equal to 1 upon 15 and this of course is the same 1 upon 15. So, in, uh, so this gives you all the membrane rotations that theta BA is equal to 5 by 3 of R1. This is equal to 5 by 36. These are 1 by 15, 1 by 15. Now, we are also going to look at, at R2 equal to 1 and I am going to do that. And R2 equal to 1 is going to give me that this point cannot move anywhere because that would imply, that means these points are here too and R2 equal to 1 would imply this. This. This where these are 1, 
this is one and this is one okay so r2 equal to one and then we can essentially now put together the a a b is equal to then r1 what is that 1 by 15 so 1 by 15 in this it's 1 because remember this is theta b a in terms of r1 and r2 then a b c is going to be equal to again this is theta b c in terms of r1 and r2 so theta b c uh, for r1 equal to 1 is 5 by 36 and for r2 equal to 1 is this and finally a b d b d is both theta b c and theta c b and this if we look at it from the chord to this this is negative from the chord to the tangent this is negative and here this one turns out to be from the chord 1 upon positive and this one is going to be equal to 1 0 1 0 B D okay so these are my um, A's okay once I get my A's okay I have already got my K A ex everything etc so now I can put that my R vector and this is the modified R vector we will see what the modification is okay mm, uh, R is equal to in brackets over all I a i k i a i into r plus summation a i transpose s i 0 these are all what is S i 0? These are the fixed 10 moments plus summed up over all of them the A i transpose the N i 0 which are the reactions that come from ok. So now let us see what R prime. These are the nodal loads which are not included in the member loads. The only nodal load is the 50 kilonewton. So let us find out what that is. So what we have to find out is how much that displace by for R1 equal to 1 and how much does it displace by for R2 equal to 1. When we have, uh, so therefore what we have is 50 multiplied by whatever, 50 multiplied by whatever. Okay. So let us look first at R2. Where R2 equal to 1, how much does this move vertically by? 0. So that means 0. Now for R1 equal to 1, how much does this move vertically by? 4 by 3. So this is going to be 50 multiplied by 4 by 3. And it is, does move down, so it does do positive work. So this is going to be equal to... 200 by 3 and 0 kilonewton. So this is R prime. Now let us find out what the AI transpose SI0 R. For AB, what is SI0? SI let us take for each one. For AB, let me take, find out what AI transpose SI0 is. Now let us look at, we have evaluated for AB, the fixed end moment is 0 and what is AI transpose? AI transpose uh, is equal to 1 
by 15 1 into 0 so this is going to be equal to 0 0 and what about Now since, note that since there is no uh, member load, the Ni0 are also going to be 0 and therefore it does not matter what you do, you are going to be having it equal to uh, 0. But what should be the AI transpose? The AI transpose is going to be, now I am going to put this down, uh, Ni0 are 0, 0, but AI transpose, if you look at it, is going to be equal to how much does this move up and down by 0 so this is going to be equal to 0 and how much does this move down by so uh, 4 by 3 so if it was upward this would be minus 4 by 3 and then for this one how much does it move by 0 0 and therefore this is going to be equal to 0 0 ok. So, I am going to actually put those in so that you know exactly how to compute it. Now, let us look at uh, for BC let us look at A i transpose S i 0. What is A i transpose for this? Again let us look at it AI transpose is going to be equal to uh, minus 5 upon 36 and 1 and what is SI 0? We have computed fixed end moment uh, for BC. Where did we compute? 112.5. So, 112.5 ok and uh, if we uh, compute uh, that what do we get? We get it equal to minus 15.625 and 112.5. Okay, and what about AI transpose NI0? AI transpose are going to be equal to, let us look at how much these move up and down by uh, due to uh, this thing. The left hand side moves down by 4 by my, uh, 4 by 3, so this is going to be minus 4 by 3. How much does the other side move up by? By 3 by 4, so this is going to be up 3 by 4. Then for uh, R2 equal to this, you are going to see that both are going to be 0 and then what is my uh, uh, A? You will see that uh, for this particular case, what is my N? Let me put those down. My N which are the reactions at these points are going to be equal to due to this 4, it is going to be equal to 4 into 15 is 60, so this is going to be 30, 30. Okay, so what I have ultimately is 30, 30. And if you look at the work done, this is going to be equal to minus 40, and this is going to be equal to 22.5. So, I found these two out uh, for uh, uh, these ok and then uh, finally uh, for B D, for B D there is no loads. So, I know I am not going to belabor the point, uh, well anyway let us let us belabor the point, there is no problem. What is A I transpose? AI transpose is going to be equal to uh, 1 by 15, 1 by 15, 0 and what are the member and moments? 0. So, what is this? 0, 0. 
let us do AI transpose NI0. Okay, what, what is it? Let us look at that. Again, for R1 equal to 1, how much does B move by? It moves down by, so it's 5 by 3, this 0, and for R2, these are going to be 0, 0. What are the reactions? 0, 0. So what do we get? 0, 0. Okay. So <clears throat> we've got it. We've got all the members, uh, AI and etc. And now what we can do is we can find out the contribution of AB to K and you will see that this is going to be equal to AI transpose and what is uh, AI transpose let us let me look at that it's going to be equal to 1 by 15 1 and what is the EI In the KAB is equal to 3 and 10 to the power of 5 into A is 1 upon 15 this and so this is going to be equal to four thousand by three. This is going to be equal to twenty thousand. This is going to be equal to twenty thousand and this is going to be equal to 3 into 10 to the power of 5. That is my KAB. My KBC is going to be equal to minus 5 by 36, 1. This is 4 into 10 to the power of 5 minus 5 by 36, 1. So this is going to be equal to 7716.049 minus 5555.56 minus 5555.56 and this is equal to 4 into 10 to the power of 5. So it is 4 into 10 to the power of 5. Okay. And this is my KBC. Okay. Then uh, uh, what else do we have? Uh, this gives me a KBC. And finally, KBD, which is equal to uh, one upon fifteen, one upon fifteen, one zero into uh, K. Uh, K for uh, this thing is going to be equal to sixteen into ten to the power of four, two one one two into 1 upon 15, 1 upon 15, 1, 0. Uh, this is going to be equal to 1 upon 15, 1 upon 15, 1, 0, 16. This is going to be 3 by 15, which is 1 upon 5. This is going to be 1 upon 5. This is going to be 2. This is going to be 1 and ultimately this is going to be equal to 4 to 66.67 and 3.2 into 
10 to the power of 5. Okay, when we put all of these uh, together, what you ultimately get is that R is going to be equal to Uh, 200 by 3 and this was 0 multiplied by when we add all of them up we get 13316 minus 5555 five, five. Point five six, sorry, minus three five five, three five five six. Okay, and this is going to be equal to ten point two into ten to the power of five into R one. R2 and then plus uh, the only one that comes in both BD and AB are going to be given 0, 0. So what we have is plus minus 15.625112 and plus minus 40. 22 point oh shit I made a mistake here this is the I transpose so the transpose would be 3 by 4 and this would be 0 0 so here I would get 0 and this one would turn out to be equal to minus 17.5. So this is actually minus 17.5 and 0. Okay. So ultimately what we are left with is this, that 13 5, 6, 10.2 into 10 to the power of 5, R1, R2 is equal to uh, 32 and uh, 66, so 99.79 and over here it's minus 112. And you can solve this for R1 and R2. Okay? And R1 and R2 in this particular case is equal to 7.469 into 10 to the power of 3 and minus 9.342 into the 10 to the power of radians. Okay, so this is the procedure that we use to solve for R1 and R2. Now once we have solved for R1 and R2, the next step is what? Is to find out the member end moments. And there you, you put in what is that SI is equal to TI into R plus SI0. And once we do that and put it in, I, I would leave it for you to put it in, you're going to get that MBA is equal to 
121.3 kilonewton meter. M B C is going to be equal to minus 339.9 kilonewton meter. M B D is going to be equal to 209.1 and M D P kilonewton meter okay and these once you can find out the membrane moments then you can find out the reactions at every end and from there you can find out the support uh, reaction so we have found out the membrane moments and the support reactions are going to be obtained by actually then uh, here you have it as this way zero and then here you have it uh, going anticlockwise. Here also you have it going anticlockwise. Uh, okay. Now here from this you can find out what the reactions are. They will be in this manner and they are going to be equal to 6.06. .06. Okay, so this is also going to be 6.06. .06. Here this is going to act in this way. Now once you put this, you are going to get this is equal to 4 into 15 is 60 kilonewton. So you will have two parts to it. One part will be uh, this aspect. So here you get 52.66, 39.49. You can compute the forces there and this will be 7.34 there is going to be this way this way ultimately from this we can find out what this and this are and then ultimately we can find out what reaction comes over here and what reaction comes over here the reaction that comes over here is directly 39.49 which is this one and this that you get over here is going to be equal to you can compute it the reaction over here which is a vertical reaction is going to be 65 this is a roller roller on a end gives you uh, both vertical and horizontal and uh, then you can find this out this is going to be equal to 52 and 62 is going to give you uh, this way. So essentially uh, what we have over here is going to be this way and this way the load is going to be equal to 8.92. Okay, so you've got your and the moment over here is going to be 224.1. So this is for this support, there's a fixed support this is for this roller support and this is for this roller support and that gives you all the support reactions that you have. So the overall point that is this particular problem if you looked at it was probably had to you had to consider several different kinds of uh, issues uh, in this and if you do it step by step as I said 
what you need to do essentially in this particular kind of situation is this that start the problem by considering member by member first find out the let me just write it down so first is of course degrees of freedom then the first step is for each member okay what do you find out first what type of element do I use so do I use the standard fixed fixed element or do I use the uh, modified element with a hinge at one end and fixed at the other end okay so once you do that the next step is automatically define member and degrees of freedom so in other words if you have both the members fixed then the rotation at both the ends would be the degrees of freedom if you had pinned at one end and fixed at the other end then only the fixed end rotation becomes the member and degree of freedom three define stiffness matrix corresponding to this degree of freedom so in other words if you have two uh, both the both ends then these member stiffness matrix will become 4 i upon l 2 i upon l 2 i upon l 4 i upon l if you only have a pin at one end and a fixed at the other end then that there is only that uh, this thing and then you have MBA is equal to 3i upon L into uh, theta BA ok so that's the define the matrix and finally find fixed end moments which are essentially SI0 if member effects present ok so that's the first step so for each member you have to figure out what type of element to use define the member and degree define the stiffness corresponding to the degrees of freedom and then find out the uh, fixed end moments now once you have done that okay the next step is kinematic relationship this is solve the geometry problem for each r i equal to 1 and all others 0 ok so solve the geometry problem find out the display provide r 1 equal to 1 and all others equal to 0 and find out what the displaced shape looks like put r2 equal to 1 and r1 equal to 0 find and all the other 0 and find out what it looks like and this way you solve the kinematic relationship and once you have that then define a i and a prime i a i essentially V i in terms of A i r and these are these these are the displacements corresponding to end reactions these are the standard ones this is the defi uh, defining the member end deformations in terms of the, this thing and once you have this then ultimately then the fourth is find r prime the effective load vector the effective load vector becomes that the loads at the nodes multiplied by the corresponding displacements for each degree of freedom that's what you'd find out and then once you do that you essentially ultimately the final thing is solve r is equal to 
k r plus a i transpose s i 0 summation summation a i transpose n i 0 for r. Once you find r 6 find s i and once you find out s i the problem becomes a statically determinate problem for which you can solve for anything. Okay. So, this in a sense is the entire problem. Now, in the next lecture, I am going to solve one more problem where I am going to introduce the factor that one of the members may be flexually rigid. How does the kinematic relation look in that particular case? And then I am going to introduce all the other member load effects like temperature, etc., etc. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye.